Today is Good Friday. Our Lord was marched out of Jerusalem after a quick trial in which an angry mob decided his fate. So badly was he beaten and abused, his cross had to be carried by a stranger. At any moment, Jesus could have called on his Father in heaven, and legions of army angels would have rescued him from his impending doom. But he did not call. The night before, though, he had called for help. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he pleaded with his Father in heaven in prayer, and he, he asked if there was any other way, and that this cup of suffering for the sins of the whole world would be taken from him. With loud cries and with tears, he pleaded to his Father above. But even after three different sessions of prayer, the answer was no. There is no other way than the cross. But Jesus was not a helpless victim. Earlier, he had reminded his own disciples that no one takes his life from him, but that he has authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. Jesus is in charge at all times, and yet he lays down his rights, his power, and privilege as the Son of God. How could Jesus so willingly continue down the path to Golgotha and to his own death? Later, the writer to the Hebrews would say how in chapter 12 when he wrote of Jesus saying, Well, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God? Yeah, the joy that was set before him was the, the joy of being with you for all eternity. And such motivation is really hard to comprehend and, and to take into ourselves and to, to really comprehend that. I mean, we struggle just to pray now and then and, you know, make it to worship when we're feeling like it. Most of our lives are, self, are centered around our needs and our wants, but the motivation that moved Jesus to continue down the road of suffering the cross was the joy of being together with you forever, sins forgiven and made new. Now, I say all of this not to instill any kind of guilt or shame, you know, that, well, at least you could do is make some effort to enjoy being with Him too. After all, you know, look what He did for you. Not at all. Jesus did nothing out of guilt or obligation, but only love for you. And it is only when that love invades your soul and that you too will do all things because, well, you love Him too. This love and the motivation to show love in return is all the work and the gift of the Holy Spirit. But it also acknowledges that there is a struggle. Jesus pleaded and cried out that there be another way. He did not want to endure the cross because it would be pain unto death. But there was something even greater than the pain, love, the Father's love and His love for you. As we gather for worship tonight and on Easter morning, let this love fill you. As you struggle to pray in your normal everyday life, um, as you struggle to find the words of Jesus and put them into practice and remain faithful to Him, yeah, it. It is His love that keeps us on the path. It is His indwelling Spirit and work in us that receives the gifts and makes use of them. Pray then that you may respond in praise and thanksgiving and have a growing desire to know Him better, serve Him more faithfully, and to live out everything that He has said to the glory of God the Father and the Spirit who lives in you.